It's the Daily Dog. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Daily Dog. I am happy that you are here this week. It's been a week. Holy shit, y'all. <laughs> I took a little bit of a break from doing some Daily Dugs, but uh, I'm back in the new year. It is 2021, and y'all, a lot of stuff has happened this week. This has been a very important week for the history of America. And uh, of course I have thoughts. And um, I, I wanna lift up a couple of short things uh, just for the record and uh, try not to be too long-winded. Uh, today is January 10th. It is, uh, we're, we're 10 days away from the inauguration of, of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Uh, a week ago today, on the 3rd of January, a recording was released uh, of a conversation that Trump had with the Secretary of State of Georgia, where he was attempting to, not attempting to, he was bullying and attempting to coerce uh, this Secretary of State into committing election fraud. On this tape, which uh, is very clear and not even a smoking gun, <laughs> Trump is committing a felony in election fraud. And it's not even the 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 fifth worst impeachable offense that he has done this week. He can't be gone soon enough, uh, y'all. But um, so that was Sunday, and on Tuesday, uh, the runoff election in Georgia happened. Both of the Democratic uh, challengers won their seats. It'll be the first time in I think half a century that Georgia has had two Democratic senators at the same time. Uh, Wednesday was a, a big day, shall we say. Uh, Wednesday was the day that a joint session of Congress met. They received the electoral votes from the many states. They entered them into the record and validated the election of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Problem is that good old Trump and his insurrectionist and seditious cronies held a little rally on the ellipse of the of the White House, in front of the White House. Another felony, a violation of the Hatch Act, which nobody else has said, but, you know, our laws be damned. Um, and between Don Jr. and Rudy Giuliani and a whole host of, of idiots and, and Trump himself just whipped these people into a frenzy. And these people just fucking stormed the American Capitol. Capitol Hill, the United States Capitol, uh, was invaded by people claiming to be Americans. And it was uh, awful to watch. I saw it in real time. It was, uh, it was amazing to, to try to wrap your head around how these people were allowed to get in there as easily as they were allowed to get in there. The other thing was how easily they were allowed to leave without being in police custody. Many of them, most of them. So the fallout from all of that has been taking place over the last few days. It is expected that the Democrats will move to impeach Donald Trump for a second time. Many people are calling for his resignation. The fact that it's Sunday night, like four days later, and Donald Trump is still the president of the United States is frankly beyond me, but that's where we are. Um, I, I wanted to lift up something specific though, something that not many people have been pointing to or recognizing as far as I can tell. Um, the reasoning behind the rationale. Uh, so a lot, of, a lot of people I've seen have said, "What you know?" They're wondering what makes people do this. What makes people think these things? What makes people act on these things? And from my point of view, it it's all based on uh, the big lie, or you know, the big lie. And in this instance, I think it's generations of nested big lies, and each big lie gives credibility and space for the next big lie to nest and become reality, right? Which is why getting rid of these people or getting rid of the, the radical way in which they think is so difficult to do because 
you remove one big lie and you think, yay, we did it. But no, the, it's like the, the layers of an onion. You have to keep peeling away. So here's what Ted Cruz said, a little bit of what Ted Cruz said on, on Wednesday as he was objecting to the electoral votes uh, from the state of Arizona. Um, towards the beginning of his speech, he said, recent polling shows that 39% of Americans believe the election that just occurred was rigged. He says, you may not agree with that assessment, but it is nonetheless a reality for nearly half the country. And he goes on to talk out of both sides of his mouth, as, as Ted Cruz uh, does quite often, um, making no sense. But that shouldn't be overlooked, okay? From a conservative's point of view, Y'all, I, I know what I'm talking about. I've, I, I have a lot of conservative friends. I've known these people for, for 20, 30 years, and I know this to be true, okay? Conservatives are accustomed to um, voting for the reality that they desire, not based on the reality in the world as observed by most people. They're voting for and they're pining for their version of, of conservative utopia. And as part of that, they are accustomed to speaking into existence the reality that they wish to be true. Then they actually do start to think of it as being true, as being real. And then they expect everybody else to give credibility to the reality that they have just spoken into existence. Does that make sense? Right? Uh, Donald Trump comes out and says, I'm the one that won the election. The only way I can lose is if there is massive fraud or corruption. And because he is seen as an authority figure in this particular cult, uh, his word is taken as uh, as an authority, and people say, yes, I agree with that. That becomes reality. And because, from Ted, Ted Cruz's uh, opinion, because so many people happen to be delusional and believe that, that gives them credibility and makes it real. And by that, that means that, hey, I'm a senator, I'm a Republican, I'm a conservative, here's my reality, you have to compromise with me. You have to come to my way and at least validate a major portion of what I say is true, even though it's complete fucking bullshit, right? That's the big lie, or that's how the big lie works. You get enough people to believe it, make it real, and then uh, get way upset when everybody starts to call you out on it. This is nested in, inside of other massively big lies, right? Uh, but the one that it really, really goes back to, the one that I still think started it all, is the lie that uh, was perpetuated and installed in these Republicans' brains like 40 years ago and further back than that. And the lie is because Democrats um, think that abortion should be legal and that abort and fight for abortion rights that democrats kill babies that's the lie right so all these republicans at at their core like everything that this is based on is around the very real understanding in their minds that democrats are baby killers and because of that they can't possibly be good public servants. They can't possibly be good people. They can't possibly have good ideas. Uh, how how crazy can these people be? They, they kill babies, right? And that gives cover to all these other lies, right? In the Reagan years, the big lie, and it still continues to this day, was if we give massive amounts of money to the richest people in this country, don't worry, just wait all of that monetary goodness is gonna float down into society. We have seen that that is also complete and utter horseshit. 
they they think that it's ironclad and absolutely real and that everybody believes in that it's understood as complete fact but it it's not <laughs> right there are um studies upon studies that show that if you want to get um help into a society and into and, and help a, a struggling economy you put you in, you put the money at the base where it's going to be immediately spent and reinvested into the into society right um other uh nested big lies on on um, health care on big pharma on um uh, the armed forces on climate change, yada, 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 all this stuff, right? But it all goes back to the ability of people that are accustomed to uh, accepting a reality based on um, authority that they assign without any corroborating evidence. Especially, this especially affects people who, in my mind, are are um, are fundamentalist in their approach to faith and religion. If you have a fundamentalist belief that um, the stories in a particular faith book are are ironclad, are um, irrefutable, are like uh, the divine word of of that particular deity, uh, and infallible. Uh, and are doing so without any evidence that any of the writing or the stories are real or, or have historical accuracy, that then allows you to be separated from observable reality and um, the scientific method when trying to decide what is real and what is not. You're taking your senses and saying, I'm not going to trust my senses. I'm going to trust the authority of, of this person who says this and make it real to me, right? Once you start to do that, you become, in my mind, much more vulnerable to misinformation, conspiracy theories, lies, big lies. Um, and uh, depending on where your authority figures lie, it, it can be potentially dangerous. We saw this week the culmination, and let me say this, the inevitable conclusion of 40 years of the GOP big lying their um, followers, their cult, and finally whipping them up into such a frenzy that when the rest of the world finally says, you know that stuff that you've been saying for the last several years, all of it's bullshit. And we're not going to give you credibility anymore. And when the Republicans are, uh, are, are not given that credibility, they think what? They think they're being um, maligned. They think they're being uh, disrespected. They think they're being um, um, attacked. Right? That they're the victim. How dare you not believe the shit that I believe? No matter that there's not any, <laughs> you know, evidence for what I believe to be true, but I'm a person. You should, you should, exp you know, it's, it's this um, blurring of opinion versus observable truth. And sad to say, going back to Ted Cruz, he says 39% of Americans believe the election was rigged. That's also very close to the percentage of Americans who have stood by Donald Trump over these last four years. His approval rating has hovered right around 38 to 42%. That's also the number of people or the percentage of people in this country that think abortion is murder. It's not a core. It's, it's, it's... <laughs> It's just the same malady that affects these people. That's what we're dealing with. So on one hand, I'm really glad that the media has finally started calling these people what they are. They're not protesters. They're, they're not um, you know, anything else other than domestic terrorists. 
They're insurrectionists, they're seditionists, that's what they are. They're also very radical and they're a cult. And now that the world is starting to see them for really who they are, most of the world is starting to see them for really who they are, and the media is starting to use that language to describe them, they're getting very antsy and they're getting very militant. And so it's going to be very interesting over the next weeks, days, weeks, months, uh, to see exactly how they act out like the two-year-olds that they are um, when their created realities are no longer accepted in the rational world. Um, it's still scary. It's, it's a strange time to be an American. But um, from my point of view, I think that's what's really driving this. It's, it's, the, it's the expectation that the reality that I speak as a conservative into existence must be upheld as true by everybody. It ties back to nationalist thinking. It ties back to, especially when they're white, most of them, um, racist thinking. Uh, especially when they're men, it ties back to sexist thinking the entitlement that everybody else must adhere to your own version of reality even without proof it's it's uh, it's a dangerous dangerous thing so what a week <laughs> it has been a, a week and, and three days since uh we rang in the new year and it doesn't seem like this is letting up anytime soon but um the tide is turning the tide is really starting to turn. Uh, Trump is now banned for life from Twitter. Uh, Apple and uh, Google took Parler, uh, the the conservative version of Twitter, where they can go and and be uh, racist all day long and nobody cares. Um, they they Apple and and Google have removed Parler from their app store. Uh, a lot of these uh, senators and and and. Um, and Congress people are starting to have uh, repercussions in terms of who is continuing to donate to them and their cause. So uh, things are moving in the generally in the right direction, but things are very fragmented right now, and uh, there's no telling where things might fall and how how things will work. Um, only five people died as a result of Wednesday's insurrection at the Capitol. It could have been half of Congress, easily. It's really scary. But uh, we shall stay tuned and, um, and, and keep looking uh, to what happens and keep speaking truth to power. So until you see me again, hopefully I'll get back on some music stuff or some lighter topics. But uh, this week, it's been all hands on deck for Holy shit, does America still exist? Um, well, in the next episode of The Daily Doug, we'll find out if America still exists. So thanks for listening today. Uh, my best to all of you in the new year. Stay healthy. Uh, stay as happy as you can. Take your walks. Stay hydrated. All that shit. And uh, we will see you next time on The Daily Doug.